Welcome please to the JBG podcast Where these G's are gonna spread their seeds of knowledge About the league, it's flourishing with ease These funny catches seem to be well read, esteemed and honest Like the man himself, Jeff Van Gundy They are high IQ, so cerebral and funny So if you're on the bus, just border on the dunny Listen to the JBG NBA Tribute Show you're listening to the JBG Tribute Show on the Deep Two Podcasting Network. I'm your host Marco, joined today by my other host Lucas, and was and for always. <laughs> uh, that the extended intro, huh? <laughs> how you going, Marco? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah. Especially considering what we just ate. I don't. So, like, maybe we need to rewrite the rules. I think we need to rewrite the rules. We're of course talking about a restaurant that you all know and love, <laughs> as you should. Uh, it is Croxton Rooster, and we deem it, um, you know, we, 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 it's, we've given it the do not eat before mm. pod, and how many times we've broken that rule? 20? 20, 25, 30. Yeah. Yeah. But a tonight, lot. we changed the order up a little bit, yeah. didn't we, Mark? What did we change it to? Um, well, we went to the gym first. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Well, we but, also ate differently, but, uh, but oh, I, yeah. I think the gym plays into it as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're not... Um, I think the... I think the Worst situation for it is to go straight from work to the couch, the apartment, mm, yeah, eating yeah, Crocs yeah. and Rooster and then trying to record a podcast. Yeah. I think that's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Also like watching the sunset from the living room of yeah. the apartment and being like, okay, it's nighttime. Yeah. My body is, oh, I've just eaten and I've seen the sun go down. It's time to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but we got the hamburger with lots this time. Mm, I got it uh, with a lot, but no egg or, or, or no bacon. Yeah, and I asked, could you please put the egg and bacon in my burger? And did they? They did. Wow. Uh, I reckon next time I'll probably just 86 your egg and bacon <laughs> and just keep to one. Because, it's a, like two, two fried eggs is a lot. Yeah, uh, but when I was eating it, I was like, this is just like, I did this for the challenge more than anything. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, but I think that they've, you know, the recipe is what it is mm. for, you know, multiple It's a reasons. classic all around this great nation of ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the what, would you, what would you call it? I would call it the fish and chip shop hamburger. I just call it the burger with the lot. <laughs> I guess you could also go with that, which is what they've, <laughs> they've also named it. Um, should we tell listeners about our uh, plan for Crocs and Rooster? Or... Or is yeah, it too we should, early? Well, it's definitely too early. Well, we can float it out there. Yeah. We can also... This could be a call to action. Yeah, for sure. So, the plan is Crocs and Rooster, they work tirelessly around the around the clock. I think they don't work on uh, Christmas and maybe one other day around Christmas and maybe two, three, four days around New Year's mm. and four days uh, around Easter. <laughs> so, that brings them to about 350... F- I can't do the math. But 353 days of work yeah. a year, yeah, which is actually insane. It's way too much. Yeah. And it's almost always the same four people there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would assume they have either they either work seven days a week or 13 days a fortnight mm. each. Yeah. Um, and the plan is just simply uh, staff them for a week or however long and allow them to go on a holiday. How would we do this, though? It would take a lot of planning. It would take a lot of planning. Uh, it would also take, like, I think initiating that conversation would yeah. be so difficult. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, being like, hey, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just the usual thanks. Uh, just the Lucas pack, thank you. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, we want to pay, we want to pay for you to go on holiday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, I think how you outlined it is true. It's not like we'll pay you to be shut. It's like we'll pay. Uh, we'll find some people to work for you mm, for mm. two weeks yep. to uh, to work in the kitchen. Now, they'd have to be well trained. They'd have to know what they're doing. Would mm. there have to be a training period? Would that maybe be a pain in the neck for the I think that for might the, be the pain for the owners. You know? I think the, I think the training might be. I know I don't think the training would be too hard, but I think it would be more of an inconvenience than anything yeah, else. Yeah. Um, and I think that the people coming into work might have to be prepared to not be getting paid as much as they're getting paid yeah, in another yeah, job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I feel like they are say, cutting costs wherever they can, yeah. these people. <laughs> um, well, it's the most affordable dinner you can it's get unbelievable. In, in the great city of Darabin. So. I mean, we had, a, we had a massive chips and two burgers with the lot mm. and it was $14.50 yeah, each. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that the fact that I feel like it's like the owners work there so that they, they, you know, they, they skip out on the wages and mm. just go straight from pro- profit to pocket. Yeah. And I assume they're also not, you know, 
They don't have the lavish lifestyles. No. They're, they don't have a chance, dude. <laughs> There's no, they have no... Yeah, but none of them are wearing Rolexes or anything like that, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but they don't like... They work from like 10 a.m. till 9 every single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, if you know anyone that might be interested in this... <laughs> well, I'm having an idea. So, uh, your, um, your brother-in-law... Yeah. ...who owns... Uh, I can say this on the pod. Yeah, we've talked about it on the pod. Also, you're allowed to. Yeah, he's a co-owner of Nico Sandwich Parlor. Um, <laughs> what if you got like people like him, people of his ilk, to do like little like three day rock star shifts? Mm. Don't don't have to train them because like they know how a kitchen yeah, works. Yeah, true. And it's just like just go nuts with what's here. Mm. Like you know, maybe that maybe there's not a Greek salad that week. Maybe there's something else. <laughs> like, true. You know, and maybe they get a little crash course on how to work the rotisseries because I feel like that's maybe the one mm. non-transferable skill. Mm. Um, but everything else is just like just fucking just go for it. Yeah, and you go, go crazy. you go in and maybe they have like a slightly alternate menu, or you you call up and you're like, oh, can I have a grilled chicken burger? Like, I'm not doing grilled chicken burgers this week. Mm. We're doing a fucking i don't know a grilled chicken sandwich or mm. something, <laughs> something like that that translates quite well <laughs> um and it, because um i remember when you we were looking to see if it had been reviewed on broadsheet and it had and it hadn't but there was one mention of it from a that they did like oh what do like fine dining chefs in melbourne like to eat when they're hung over and someone was like yeah i like to get a whole chicken and like a huge chips from croxton rooster and then, like, eat it with uh, tum, like, you know, the garlic sauce that you mm. get at Aljana at mm. home. God, we got to go to Aljana again. Yeah, we haven't been there in ages. Um, I live so far away now. <laughs> um, so, I feel like there would almost definitely be goodwill in Melbourne's uh, culinary community. Oh, you'd hope so. For Croxton Rooster. Yeah. So, do you do you remember who the, the chef is? No. It's Tom Sarafian of Sarafian, Melbourne. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, That's my favorite restaurant. That's my favorite scene. <laughs> um, I don't really know what this guy does. No, me neither. But you, you take my point. Like the yeah. fact, like that's the article it's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe he's not the only character of his sort to do yeah. the same thing on a Sunday. Like, yeah, I'm just trying to get a photo up of this. This. Oh this, right, this, I this see, guy. I see. What was his name? Tom. Tom, Tom Sarafian. Sarafian. Because I reckon, surely, if he's talking all this, talking all this. Oh, wow. He's like a famous chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if he's talking all this uh, all this game, I've never seen this man. Oh, he should just do life. it. We should just ask oh. him to do it. What if we emailed him and we're like, what if you got staff from your restaurant to work at Crocs and Rooster for two hey, weeks? Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You say this talk is your favorite. Talk, and I'll walk the fucking wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I reckon I've never seen this oh, guy. Oh, and then we might get garlic sauce at Crocs and Rooster for two weeks. Wait, why is that again? Well, because he talks about having uh, having it with tum. You know, oh, right, right, right. Which right, right. is the Lebanese garlic sauce that uh, is... Oh, uh, that you can get at Aljana. That you yeah. can get at Aljana. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy gets a whole chicken. Yeah. But like, you know, he probably keeps it for sandwiches exactly. throughout, the week, right, throughout right. the week. Exactly. Right, bro. He's exactly. just like us. They're yeah. just like us. Yeah. Not that that's something we ever get from Crocs and Rooster. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's the one thing we never get, the chicken. But I could imagine getting it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah. So, so I think spirits are, are higher than usual mm. after a Crocs and Rooster session. Yeah, for sure. Energy levels, at least. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because we didn't get the schnitzel. I don't know if we mentioned that in the episode, but we definitely mentioned it pre-episode. Um, but that's not why we're here tonight, Marco, is it? It's like that's how we start every episode. Yeah, we never we never start with why we're here. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, it is fine. Um what a what an NBA season we've had. Oh my god. <laughs> it was a season for sure. Eighty two games per team, might I add. Yet again. Uh, yeah. They went back to back with that. Uh Villanova a bye once again. <laughs> um now how, what was the thing again about how a few teams did it was it just the Lakers and the Paces that played 83 games this year or was it the lakers and the Pacers played 84 and the other teams that made the semis no i think only if you made the, the final you played 83 but i don't want to be quoted on that yeah <laughs> but you also said that the the pelicans played five games against one team against the sacramento kings yes. yeah which i think that means oh, one of them yeah 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 we would have played 83 yeah <sighs> hang on let me think right now did no. you play them in the in the in-season tournament yeah, f- playoffs yes but, but they should have rescheduled that game. Yeah. Or something. Oh, no. Now we're at an impasse. Yeah, we're at this an is, impasse. You've thrown me a curveball. It's like, okay. From one, first bat at the plate. <laughs> from one buffoon tournament to another, 
We're here for the plan. Yeah. The third annual plan. And by third, I mean fifth, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, um, uh, I think it's at least, I think it's fourth slash fifth. Because there was the bubble, the bubble Twin, where... Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fifth. Yeah. Fifth, fifth but fourth in its current format. Let's fourth in its current format. Let's call it that. I, and the Pelicans even, making their third appearance in four years. Yeah, I know. Hang the banner. Same as the Lakers and the Atlanta Hawks. That's actually, just to start the episode off with that, that's actually really depressing that three teams have been <laughs> playing three of the four years. But I feel like in the in the Pelicans, uh, it's a bit... It's a bit more positive than it is for the Lakers yeah, and for, for sure. the Hawks. For sure. Um, but yeah, it's 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 playing season, baby. It's uh, it's time get your bloody ca- <laughs> watches set. You it's got- the most exciting four day period of the year. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um, the West up first, and then the East, and then the East are forced into playing a back to back because <laughs> probably whoever sets the schedules, let's call it Adam Silver for now. <laughs> <laughs> Even Adam Silver knows the fucking eight nine. The battle for eighth seed in the East is not uh, as important as the battle for eighth seed in the West, <laughs> or like most regular season <laughs> yeah, yeah, games. Yeah. So they're like, they're like, fine, we can we can make this one a back. Isn't that funny? Imagining Adam Silver like um, the office lady at your high school, like uh, entirely responsible for scheduling for the entire <laughs> for the entire year. <laughs> yeah, uh, I imagine it them being in the raw room and then being like, oh, should we do this? Should we just, oh, then we lose the day. And then I, rem- I reckon someone's just like, it's the fucking East. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares like, if Chicago has to play a back to back? Yeah, um, just so long as Villanova get the behind. Uh, but yeah, let's. So, do you want to jump into it, or, or more, or should we do some more, some more <laughs> chatting? No, nah, let's jump into it because I think the the context of it will sort of emerge as we jump into it. Mm. Um, starting with the West, where yeah. like the playing race was just. All, you hate the term play-in races and you hate for it to just be as close as it was this yeah. year as well. Yeah. With the Phoenix Suns in sixth place um, with 49 wins and the Golden State Warriors in 10th place. I feel like they were in 10th for like 55 games. It could have been. Um, with 46 wins. So only three game difference. They like, really followed the trajectory of the season. Yeah. Like when, they, yeah. Like, <laughs> when everyone was losing, they were losing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, But yeah, so sixth and also seventh seed in the West finished on 49 and 33, which would have had him a game behind the New York Knicks, who of course finished second Mm -hmm. in the East. Yeah, and Um, we would have had the tiebreaker on Milwaukee too. (laughs) (laughs) Would you? Yeah, I think think we beat them twice. Damn, there you go. The tiebreaker Pelicans. I don't want to be... It's just the Suns you didn't have the tiebreaker on. (laughs) Um, But yeah, the the, the 9-10 game... Jesus, the 9-10 game in the West, uh, both of those teams are, are 10 games above 500. Yeah. That's that's a yeah. good season. Yeah. It's like a strong season. Yeah. The 9-10 game in the West is also the, the, the 3-6 matchup from last season. Right? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, it feels... That, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was going to say, but both teams have taken a step back. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, well, we can talk about Pretty that. obvious. <laughs> um, but no, the, the 9.30 a.m. game, hopefully they, they get up in time, <laughs> is the late, is the Lakers... Uh, I think they would be taking a flight to <laughs> New Orleans. Not a bus. <laughs> no, we'll get onto that later. <laughs> but the, the Lakers will be flying over to New Orleans to play at SKC, the blender. Mm-hmm. After um, only being there two nights ago as well. So yeah. I and uh, I wonder if they just parked up at the Ritz or something. You know? I doubt it. But, <laughs> but they might have. They might have. It could have. It could have been on the cards. Um, so I'm trying to think of something like they went in there and stole their lunch, but to make it like smoothie themed. They went in there and stole, <laughs> stole their, their smoothie. smoothie. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Damn. After. Oh, wait. Also, keep that in the annals. That's pretty good. But. Smoothie King Center, when LeBron, but it, as LeBron calls just it, just it the Smoothie Center. <laughs> um, That's fine. Or as Anthony Davis calls it, the Smoothie King. <laughs> that one was the worst. Uh, Marco, why don't you take us away um, as we are thirteen minutes into this pod? Why don't you take us away with the uh, how you how you're feeling about this uh, seven eight matchup in New Orleans? I'm feeling pretty nervous on the basis that they beat us there two nights ago um we'd we'd have like you know we'd we could have almost locked down the four seed like uh about three weeks ago 
and we just had that awful little losing streak and then like really pulled it together um over the last like five games of the season like some really impressive wins zion i think zion probably playing the best he like all round games he's ever played like offensively and defensively um and so yeah going into that game day 82 against the lakers with ingram coming back i just had an awful feeling even going into that game that like it was going to sort of be the end of the run and it was like Mm. i don't think you know i don't think they out coached us i don't think that they have the matchup over us but i think like we just played really poorly and they you know the they might have felt like i mean we had we had more on the line but they you know they really wanted to go in there uh, and give themselves two shots at making out of the plane by winning that game. Um, so I just don't know how much is going to change um, mm. from you know f- uh, from Sunday night to Tuesday night mm. um, as 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 it is. I you know I think I think we're the better team. I think we got the better roster. Um, we don't have an answer for Anthony Davis. Like uh, Jonas Valanciunas got subbed off like three minutes into the game and like didn't really come back on. Mm. Um, Who is his matchup? Uh, Larry Nance. Ooh, how do you feel about that? I, I I like. I think the idea is like, all right, we're not gonna we're not gonna beat the Lakers by beating Anthony Davis. Let's just like kind of play a bit smaller, a bit more mobile, and try and you know beat them in other ways, like stop them on the perimeter and uh you know be more, be better on offense there'll be like lots of zion at the five we've seen heaps of that over this last stretch and it's been it's actually finally been good it's finally mm. been like our best look man <laughs> sorry to jump in but you i feel like the two times you're most thrilled about zion is when it's zion at the five or point zion. yeah yeah <laughs> it should just be both like, <laughs> yeah. um yeah he's like lebron those are his two best positions yeah. <laughs> but um so I, I think like I don't I don't I don't think there's sort of a riddle matchup wise here. I don't think it's like oh the Lakers are going to win because Anthony Davis is going to dominate inside. I think like uh you know I think they'll you need a huge performance from LeBron who is great at performing well, and you need <laughs> Anthony and you need Anthony Davis to stay on the floor for. 38 minutes yeah um which you know he's not always fantastic at Mm. conversely for the pelicans you just need like you need a really good game from zion you need uh a much better game from ingram than you got in his first game back um and you need cj to be in like the form that he's been over the last 10 games Mm. he's been averaging like 30 points on good shooting until until sunday night so yeah i for me this is less like all right what's the matchup here how's this going to go down and it's more like do you want to be in the playoffs Then Mm. like perform yeah yeah Yeah, i think that that's where i think that's where the lakers have the advantage it's just like number of mistakes made i feel like i just i I don't know i feel like the i feel like your team is understandable you won 49 games you still have really yeah had had a really good season yeah um but i still just feel like the um yeah, I still I, f- I feel like LeBron and an Le- and a LeBron led team will just make less mistakes than yeah. the Pelicans, and then also the likelihood that the Pelicans have a bad game team wide is is a little higher than the mm. likelihood that LeBron lets his team yeah have a bad game. Um, yeah, look but, what he what he did in the Sunday game. Like he had twenty eight, eleven, and seventeen. <laughs> like, crazy and five steals. Yeah, and five steals. Um, yeah, so just like can create and do anything, puts it when he puts his mind to it. I saw a little clip package of like LeBron like trying defensively mm. against you, you guys, which just must suck when you just see him not yeah. defend for eighty one games yeah. and then decides to defend when it's when it's when he's playing against yeah. your team. Yeah, but like credit to him, he yeah he doesn't just. It's not like he tries and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's like when he tries, it it comes off. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, like I, I don't know. Have you ever seen LeBron? You know, especially this Lakers iteration of LeBron, where it's like, all right, he can't do it eighty-two nights a night a season, mm. but like when he actually puts the effort in, he always, always performs. Yeah. Like if if the Lakers lose, it's not because of him. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that, like that, um, the MO will be like, let's get the let's get the seven seed, let's get the rest, let's not like let's not fuck around, let's not yeah. like try and let's not have to win our season again on two days after, um. So I, I, I think the Lakers will win. Yeah. I think they'll 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 come to SKC and win. Uh and and yeah, I just 
I, 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 I just I feel like there's there's a bit of an energy that's kind of that's kind of left uh, the Pelicans. Or you know what? I just think your team is very streaky. Yeah, 100%. like just this this it's constantly in in a peak or a trough, and there's no in between. And I don't know what you put that down to. Is it is it inexperience? Is it like is Willie too nice of a coach? Maybe <laughs> is he like understand his players too much? Is is CJ not like as much of a leader as uh, as it appears from the outside. Like, I feel like a player that's like part of the players association, vice president or whatever he is. I feel like they would, they would be a good leader, but I mm. feel like, I feel like a good leader wouldn't allow such a talented team to be so inconsistent. Yeah. For um, sure. So, so yeah, but, but it, yeah, by all accounts, you guys have been in an, in an uptick lately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, if, yeah, if I were to make a pick, I'd pick the Lakers. Yeah. 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 Me too. I think that, that streaky nature there's a bit of Willie in it where, let's say, Dyson Daniels will have like four or five. <laughs> uh, uh, he'll have like four or five good games in a row. Like he'll be really good defensively, and then like it'll become very evident in like the second quarter of a game that like he's you know he's in a slump. And mate, he's young, and he's not like he's he's not gonna be. He's probably not going to be an NBA starter. Let's say that about mm. Dyson Daniels. Like, I think I think we're at that point where it's like, all right, can he be like a good role player off the bench? So, and those sorts of players aren't, you know, like at that age, are not going to perform night in night out. Problem is, Willie will just like leave him in for mm. the entire game, even though he's playing like shit defensively and offensively. <laughs> instead of being like, all right, just scrap that. Let's just go to our, our good player. Yeah. Like, yeah. But because he's like, oh, but it's been working and maybe he'll find his groove a bit and blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I think there is this thing where like we have so many young, inexperienced players. Like, yeah, Zion, Zion is still young, but also he has played like less than half of the amount of NBA games that he should have played at this point in his career he's less he's played less than 50 percent i well, you know like you'd you would expect him to have uh, yeah no he's definitely played less than 50 percent. he missed an entire season and he had two seasons where he didn't crack 30 games true and then a 61 and a 70 game season well uh shout out to me and angus who both said that zion was going to play well my call was he's going to be eligible for end of season awards yeah i can't remember what angus was exactly yeah. i think angus might have said 70 games yeah yeah, which, she's which, on the money. <laughs> she won on match day eighty two. <laughs> yeah, and maybe that, and you know what, that that is genuinely like, I think the only way that we become like a genuinely long term good team is if he just learns how to play seventy good games of basketball. Yeah, a year. not just did. play seventy games, but like, but like, yeah. you know, he still can stink it up on occasion. He had three turnovers in the first quarter against the Lakers. Like, yeah, he's twenty three. Yeah, I know. What the fuck? It's nice. When did that happen? <laughs> Did he just? He's got. He's got the Jason Tatum yeah. Um He had a bit of a stinker against the Lakers yeah. as well. Hopefully, yeah. he doesn't replicate that in his yeah. next game against the Lakers. Uh, wow! Oh my God! Your guys' last three games were against the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other three playing teams. Yeah. Um, well, oh, what was your pick for the seven eight? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Lakers, mm. but it's not like footy where you have to tip no, your own team. No, it's not at all. I have a, I have a basketball podcast, <laughs> but I but I do like us to just win a game like this as well. Like, yeah, I think two years ago it would be like, oh, this is either a Lakers blowout or it's going down to the wire. I think we could just put them away. Yeah, like, you know. But yeah, I'm going with the Lakers. But like as you said, I feel like those Dyson Daniels minutes. The I feel like the experiment the experimenting won't happen in this mm. game. Yeah. I would like if Willie goes. To, you know, if any team in playing goes to an eight player rotation mm. like like now is the time that they'll do that yeah. even in the playoffs you can run nine players for the first game or yeah. two and then if you're like okay no our backs are against the wall now it's like like it's, the plan is immediate backs against the wall yeah who will sure. win the right to get swept by the Nuggets <laughs> that is what the Lakers and the Pelicans are playing for um, the 9-10 game uh, also two extremely solid seasons as we said mm-hmm. 46 and 36 for both the Kings and the Warriors now, from from what I've been looking into, the Warriors are just going to need to take a short bus ride <laughs> to get to Sacramento. How, how far is it, Lucas? Uh, was it two hours or something? Yeah, 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 yeah two yeah. hour bus ride. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And then when they have to make that bus ride to LA, no, they're not going to be able to take a bus to New Orleans either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if if me and Mark were right, which we're we're, we're very rarely wrong. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, the, the Kings are hosting the Warriors in the Golden One Center. Hash- mm. Or is it, no, is it the Golden One Center? Yeah. Or yeah. is that the Nuggets? 
No, no that's Ball Arena. It's Ball Arena. So, yeah. like a G1, uh, light the beam, uh, you know, all the fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, a rematch of the 3 6 uh, uh, matchup from last year's playoffs. Do you think this will be reminiscent of that series? Do you reckon that it'll, it'll be to that level or similar, you know, will the, will the viewing product be as enjoyable? Mm, that's, an, that's an interesting point because... I, can I just also say, I think everyone will be biased for the first quarter. Yeah. Like, they'll even if the first quarter is bad and it's the rest of the game is that level, I think everyone will be like, no, it's this, they're just having a bad quarter and, you know, we know, <laughs> we know how good it can be. Um, I think the, that series last year... Like, that Kings team was just on such a roll all Mm. year long. And that Warriors team got on such a roll, you know, down the stretch of the season. That Warriors team was also better than this Warriors team. Um, And the Kings have, I think, taken steps back by not not improving. And then also some of their players getting bad. Um, Dude, hang on. Sorry again to jump in. (laughs) The Kings won 48 games last year and were the three seed. Yeah. They won 46 this year. The Warriors won 44 games last year. Yeah. And then the <laughs> and they, they're two games worse and yeah, four spots yeah, lower. Yeah. Wow. That's... Wait, so was that Warriors team worse then? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Um, but I, sorry. I don't know. I don't... I, I think it'll be... I think it'll be like scrappier, less flashy basketball than that yeah. series. Because like... That's definitely what the Warriors have been this year. Um, and the Kings have just been... They are just having the most awful run. Mm. Like... Uh, not not just in terms of like winning games, but like the product has not looked good mm. for like maybe the last ten games. Malik Monk um, will sit this one out, I believe. So will Jonathan Kaminga. So you know, <laughs> I guess tip for <laughs> that. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think in terms of reflecting on that, I think we, I think we will see like all the same. I think we'll see the same matchup as we saw in the playoffs last year. Like it'll be like I, the Warriors are a matchup nightmare for the Kings. Like they just have their number, mm. um, and it will be like, all right, can De'Aaron Fox just like be better than Steph Curry for a game? You know, mm. yeah. which I don't, I, I no. don't foresee happening. No. So, I, are you, so you'll be, are you, would you say Warriors? Very solidly picking the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm very comfortably picking yeah, the Warriors yeah. to, to choose a synonym. They've they've beaten the Kings even more comfortably, like so many times this season like, yeah like putting that playoff series aside they've just like not only have they figured out the kings through that playoff series but they've like kind of gone a step above and been like mm. we will just beat you every time we play you. yeah and like oh man i'm excited to see uh i'm excited to see how draymond wait and yet the kings have the tiebreaker on them <laughs> wait that's true i swear the warriors won the first two games against them what the hell Maybe does it go to goal difference? Yeah, no. Oh yeah, if you, if if it's two two. Yeah. Oh my god. But I swear the Warriors won the first two games yeah, against them because I remember worrying. Uh, I remember watching that closely and being like, "Can the I don't know." You know what was weird? I wanted the Kings to. I wanted the Kings to like have the leg up over the Warriors. What, what's that? So the first game. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. First game, yeah. Golden State won one hundred twenty-two to one hundred fourteen. Next game, Golden State won 102 to 101. Next game, Sacramento won 124 to 123. Fourth game, Sacramento won 134 to 133. So there's been three one point games between them this year. And they don't have the Mongol difference. Um, they don't. No. They simply don't. It would be home wins. No. Yes, it's home wins. Hang on, that doesn't make sense either. It goes. Well, the, no, Sacramento's won more home games. Oh, total, yeah. overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Or Sorry. like result. It goes to some. It doesn't go to goal difference. It comes to something stupid like uh, record against conference. Or oh, something, yeah, or something that's right. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Which and yeah, Sacramento have them in every category except <laughs> road wins and goal difference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, I'm interested to see how. Oh, okay. So that was the first tangent. Yeah. Sorry, no. I only had one tangent. I remember watching, I wanted the Kings to have like, to have gotten the Warriors back. But for some reason I didn't, I couldn't let go of wanting the Warriors to beat them. <laughs> like I still wanted the Warriors to come out victorious. Um, but I wanted the Kings to be better. I don't know how to, I don't know how to like, what exactly I yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't want them to have the satisfaction of winning yeah. against the Warriors, I think. I think it was a nice like, 
big brother little brother thing yeah uh and i just couldn't i couldn't let go of my generation <laughs> the, the first my initial thought was i'm excited to see how draymond goes against sabonis mm. because i feel like the war the warriors made Sabonis a weakness in yeah. last year's playoffs, yeah. and that was kind of the avenue to victory. Uh, and you know, Draymond's Draymond's had a shocking like forget about the basketball. The basketball has been so so mm. for Draymond, like for Draymond especially so so. Yeah, but like except for the three point shooting, <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, but the you know just messing with the team's rhythm and flow in a season they did not need it. Mm. Um, I'm excited to see how he will go in, you know, yeah, a win or go home. Or, you know, the, yeah, because yeah, the 9-10 yeah. game uh, is... It's win or go home. It's, it's, it's the end of the season. Yeah, it's win or Cancun. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like not even playoffs or Cancun. Yeah, it's yeah, like not yeah. even playoffs or pick eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and I think more than just like they made Sabonis a weakness, they like made Sabonis a weakness for the rest of the league. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. when a team's really wanted to beat the Kings this season, they've been like, all right, we'll just like do what the Warriors did to Sabonis. Mm. Um, and it's been so effective. Like we, we, we won the Cody Zeller minutes when we, when, <laughs> when we played them. It was just like dunking on him and shit. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I really don't know how the Kings can, I don't know how they can wriggle their way out of this one. Let's mm. say that. Mm. Uh, so then that would have us having Pelicans Warriors again at SKC for the <laughs> yeah another another one for the battle of our eight seed uh, and the Warriors might have to fly to that one. So what do you th- what do you think is what do you think is going to happen there? I, I I think we'll win quite comfortably. I'm okay. actually fully confident we can beat the Warriors. Okay, like we last time we played them again a couple of nights ago. <laughs> um, like it was close. Um, but like, even like Steph was just ridiculous at the end of that game mm. and that was not enough for them to, to overcome us. That was your best quarter of the season or something. Yeah. Or was it 42 to 17 Yeah, or yeah. And we were out getting fucking burgers. You were. <laughs> I was, I was as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I've, I'm fully confident that, yeah, we can like, Draymond did quite a good job on Zion and he still had like 30 and whatever. Mm. Um, Dyson Daniels did fucking like p- potentially the best job you can do on Steph Curry. Like he was contesting those threes like very, very few players in NBA history have contested mm. Steph Curry threes. Crazy and, though. And they were think, all going in. Yeah. Well, the, I think Steph had figured him out that like, I think they were good contests at the start yeah. and then Steph yeah. just figured out that like pump fake and then as soon as Dyson Daniels yeah, was up, yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. okay, Technically, this is an open shot. Yeah, he, hit, yeah, yeah. he hit two in like the last two minutes and like, I think three uh, overall. Yeah. Those like pump fake and then go. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and then, but then missed one to win the game. So, you know, let's, yeah. not, let's not forget about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, fucking 10 seconds to go, Dyson Daniels or Steph, I know who I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what, what I mean to say is like, I don't think they have an answer for us for like our offense. And I think we just have, I think we just have a better roster than them. Like, I think when it comes down to it, we can just put better basketball players on the floor than they can and just strangle them out of the game. Um, And like, like I could see Steph having like a 50 point game and like it almost not being enough. You know what I mean? Like Mm. that's because I feel like it could be just the full distillation of the Warriors problems this season where it's like, Nobody can get a good shot except for Steph Curry. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're going up against, I don't know, it, like if, it, if Ingram's in any sort of shape to play, like there's just so much, there's just so much more good offense coming from our side. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> I think, I think if, if, if you do want to turn this game into a shootout, which I think you can quite easily, then yeah, like Steph can go for 60 even, yeah, and yeah. like, if the scores are around the 120 to 130 range, I don't trust the rest of the Warriors can get 60. Nah. Um, and then, yeah, you guys use like, you can just go down the list of how many 20 point, 25 point like players you have yeah. on your roster. Yeah. Um, if it were to be Pelicans, Warriors though, I just, I'm just, I, th- I think the Pelicans would win, but I would pick the Warriors. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I would rather, <laughs> the thing I said about the, the 76ers a few years ago in like the second or third round, I can't uh, the second round, when we have, I think we're doing a four man weave, mm. but I would rather be wrong and pick the Warriors than be wrong and not pick the Warriors. Right. Okay. So that's like, that, like you always have to back, you always have to back them in. Like, yeah. 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 Um, 
So, so even though I do think that the Pelicans, are <laughs> but no, if you don't, don't, don't hold that to me. I'm not trying to cover my both. Yeah, both yeah, bases. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I though that it. sounds exactly. If, like... if the Pelicans win, you're wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Even though the that's same... what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, now, before we move on to the Eastern Conference and potentially go to an ad break, mm. do you think uh, the Lakers stand any chance against the Nuggets? And the Pelic- uh, the Pelicans slash Warriors stand any chance against the Thunder? I don't think the Lakers stand any chance against the Nuggets. <laughs> what would you say? I would say that's a sweep. I'd say it's a sweep. Mm. Oh, I think LeBron could win one game. Ah, oh, that's a, that's a that's a hard sentence to argue. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still going to sweep. Like game three, you know, it's like oh, it's two one, and then yeah, like yeah, the next, like what are we doing? What are we doing here, guys? Like, True. You know. Two one, and then twenty eight free throws to four. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Mike yeah. Malone gets a tech, gets ejected, <laughs> and then oh, look at that gentleman sweep. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think we need to talk about that one very much. <laughs> cool. um, I think. Uh, I think the Pelicans, the Warriors could give the Thunder a series, but I don't think they could beat them. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what to. I just don't. I just have no idea what to expect from this Thunder team in the playoffs. Like they're really good. Yeah, and so you just assume they'll be really good, but like, yeah, all I feel like all young teams like they at least they at least make a couple. They have games where they make enough mistakes that like a more. <clears throat> Uh, experienced team I'm not saying the Pelicans are more experienced mm. um, although maybe technically we are <laughs> you would be technically <laughs> um, you know that a more experienced team can like pounce on and uh, <coughs> steal a game, game or two away yeah you know where th- just those ones where it's like alright it's pretty close but OKC okay, so are kind of winning this and then in the fourth quarter they just completely lose their heads defensively and yeah they don't know how to get back control of the game um, but I do think I do think the Thunder will win either matchup quite comfortably because they're just they're just so good. I don't know if it would be comfortable. I think against you guys, I could see that going to six. Like really? I could see, I could just see so much variance. Yeah. In, in their like performances, mm. um, and even the Warriors, I could like see that going to seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just think that like, like who would be their five their five best players? Shea, Chet, uh, Jada, yeah, Lou Dort, mm-hmm. and yeah. then who's the fifth? Yeah. It's probably Josh Giddy. Exactly. Yeah. And like, if yeah. if but the... he can't be on the floor, like the end of a playoff game. Like. Exactly. <laughs> so then, who is it? Case and Wallace. Yeah, or Isaiah Joe, or um, uh, Aaron Wiggins. Um, so here we like. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the Warriors, Gordon Hayward. <laughs> oh, Jay, that, that, that's a good shout. Yeah. But if the Warriors can turn Sabonis last year into, you know, if they can bring all of his weaknesses yeah. to the floor then surely they can do that with yeah. Aaron Wiggins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. um, And even the Pell's fifth player, player is going to be so much better than the Thunder's fifth player. You yeah. Know? Like if it's Trey Murphy or Jonas Valanciunas, like yeah. it's still the better player there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that the Thunder would, would win their first round series, yeah. but I think it's not going... I, don't, I would not... I would not pick a sweep, no matter who yeah. they come up against. It, any Pelicans, Lakers, Kings, Warriors, I wouldn't pick a sweep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's enough? It'll be like trying enough for them to kind of... What, what am I trying to say here? You know how like Memphis got completely rattled. Um, who did they have in the first round last year? Or did they lose in the first? Was round? it Lakers? Do we not no. have this conversation before dinner? But I thought the Lakers. I thought the Lakers beat them in the second round. Ah, that 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 rings a bell. Man, we're doing that thing. No, no, no. It was the first round. Fuck. Yeah, and then the Lakers beat the Warriors ah, in the second round. That's, that's, right. what, that's what's happened. The coveted 6-7 yeah. second round match. It's just like that thing where a young team just gets like rattled enough in one series that they're kind of a bit dud for the rest of the playoffs. You know, so the, Like if OKC grinds out a seven-game series against the Warriors, do they then uh, you know, lose to Dallas mm. in the second round? Yeah. Yeah. Which I can definitely foresee seeing. Yeah. But then even last year, six beat three, seven beat two because they were the more yeah. experienced yeah, yeah, teams. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I think I think I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be an interesting thing to keep to yeah. keep our eye on the, yeah. the playoffs. That is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we go to a break then? Yeah, it sounds good. You want to talk WNBA? Maybe some WNBL, Australian Opals chat. Heck, even dabble in some Euroleague. Find the W Basketball Show on the Deep Two Podcast Network. The NBA moves so quickly these days; it's hard to keep up. 
Shams and Woj are breaking stories left and right, but the quick time out is right there with them to keep you informed on the latest NBA news. Stop in and let us break it down as it happens. Find the quick time out on the Deep 2 Podcast Network. And we're back. Now, to the right turn conference. I haven't called it that for a while. <laughs> Wait, what does it mean when a team has an asterisk next to their name in... In basketball reference? Yeah. Oh, in the case player appearance. Yeah. There it is. Uh... Just look at the ledger. L- ledger. Look at the legend. <laughs> um, oh, you're looking at one, mate. <laughs> now, now on to, as you said, yes, exactly right, the right in conference. Sorry, I'm just looking at all the games. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I was trying to buy myself time. I was looking at all the games played for the... For you're the, you're uh, trying to say I went back from the break too quickly. No, 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 no. I, I, I started this uh, you started this <laughs> task when I said, too late. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, so, far out, man. Ten of the Oklahoma City Thunder players are eligible for end-of-season awards. Wow. Man, which would make you think that they were just healthy the entire time. Mm. And <clears throat> they might have just had DNP CDs. Yeah. Other than probably Shay. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But yeah, c- c- incredibly healthy team. Mm. Uh, so shout out to is, it's uh, very like typical young one seed or <laughs> young top four seed is to be just like so healthy. Like the Kings, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did the Kings? Did anyone miss any game last <laughs> no, season? It, it didn't feel like it. <laughs> no. It also felt like they played a hundred games yeah, last yeah. season. Um, uh, so now, so uh, in the Eastern Conference. Um, the, so the gap between 10 and 6 in the Western Conference was three games, was 46 wins to 49 wins. <laughs> the gap between 8th and 3rd in the Eastern Conference uh, was also three games with 46 wins and 49 wins. So what does that tell you about the quality of these two conferences, Lucas? <laughs> it's pretty even. <laughs> Um, I thought you were going to say the, the difference between... Oh, between 10 and... Six. 7. Yeah. 10 yeah. and 7 in the East oh, yeah. is 11 it's, it's games. It's 11 games. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, also, quick question. They do the 7-8 game first and the 9-10 game second. Mm-hmm. Do you reckon that's the way to do it? Or do you reckon you should do it the other way around? Yeah, so the 7-8 seeds get an earlier night. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually am so for that. Um, A little bit more night-night time. Uh, okay, so now, yeah, East East play-in. Mm-hmm. Seven, eight is the uh, Philadelphia 76ers hosting the Miami Heat, and then the 9-10 is the Chicago Bulls hosting the Atlanta Hawks. Um, should we just start with the Bulls-Hawks and just, like... Oh, yeah, just nip Get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, I... The only reason I'll watch this game is if I forget to turn it off. <laughs> Chum, like straight up. <laughs> it might be the most pointless game of basketball ever played, mm. um, and it might be played again next year. Like it actually, <laughs> it actually feels like they could be the ninth and the tenth seed again next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is this is so silly, and um, I've said this twice today, not on the podcast, but Chicago and Atlanta got to this funny point this season where. They or maybe I, or maybe they were talking about on the Deep Two podcast as well, um, where there was no chance of them getting any higher than the ninth of the ten seed, but there was also no chance of them dropping any lower than the ninth That's of the right. ten seed. So it's like they couldn't with like twenty fifteen games, fifteen twenty games ago, they couldn't go like, all right, we're gonna tank, so we're guaranteed a lottery pick. But they also couldn't go, all right, we're gonna like win games, so we can like hold on to our play in <coughs> spot. They were just like. Oh, what we have nothing to do. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, not only is this a meaningless game of basketball, they've also played like the most meaningless fifteen game stretch each. Um, mm. You know, no Trey for Atlanta. I don't know what the fuck is going on in Chicago. Yeah, there is just an there is just an absolute awful assortment of players out there every mm. night. Um, so yeah, uh, I won't be watching this either. <laughs> Man, like they will. They will... God, imagine them coming up against the Celtics. <laughs> they somehow make it to the eighth seed. Man, I, I imagine first, also... First three-game sweep. <laughs> imagine being the king for the Warriors. Yeah. I was going to fucking say that. You know how crazy that is? <laughs> what, the three-game sweep? I was going to say something about the three, it being a three-game thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, uh, but um, imagine you're the kings of the Warriors and you're looking at the fucking other conferences, yeah. 9-10 yeah. uh, matchup. 
You'd be so mad. Imagine the Houston Rockets and you're like, <laughs> like you know, we're, we're probably the third most Eastern team in the Western Conference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah the, the Rockets would be like, like they'd be given the, the sixes and heat sweats. Yeah. Um, right. So got to pick... Uh, Bulls oh, Hawks. you have to pick a winner here, don't we? Yeah. Fuck, I actually have no idea. <laughs> you know what? You know who wins? The fans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, nah, I reckon if Trey plays, I'll pick the Hawks. I don't think he's playing. Uh, I might go with the Bulls then. I think I'm, I'm going to pick the Hawks because they they seem to have won games like this this season. Mm. Like DeJounte will have... Remember when DeJounte took like 46 field goals or something like that? He'll, yeah. do, he'll do that. Yeah. Like, I think I'm going to go with the Chicago Bulls because they had Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, That's got to help him somehow, right? 7-8. Uh, uh, <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers and the Miami Heat. This will be played in the in the, uh, Wells the, Fargo a- the ATM, oh. is what I was going to oh. say. Um, what do you reckon is going to happen here? I'm really, I'm really interested to see how this game goes. I feel like 5-6 in the East is the, are the Magic and the Pacers who... Uh, had the same record as the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. And I would say the Heat and the Sixers are obviously more playoff tested, but even, you know, uh, I, I would say better as yeah. well yeah. right now. Um, so I think, yeah, first of all, first like note would be Magic and Pacers are probably pretty happy they avoided <laughs> the play. But yeah, these, I feel like they're both really strong teams. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but yeah, what do you, who do you reckon will win? What do you, or, or what do you reckon will happen? Or just general thoughts. Yeah, first. well, because it, it, it is like Embiid's coming, Embiid's back. He's had a huge game against like the Detroit Pistons or something like that. So he's primed for the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also Miami have just like, you know, again, I'm not sure how much it actually translated to winning, but they've hit that like pre-playoff Miami thing where everyone's kind of, you know, performing and playing really well that that tyler hero to caleb martin you know did you see him do the double pump fake in the in the paint and then pass it to caleb martin for the dunk <laughs> no, when so was this? funny uh in their last game of the season um oh, yeah that's day 82. like he's on the fast break one you know one defender comes pump fakes guy flies past him another defender comes pump fakes mm. guy flies past him and then instead of laying it up he just passes it to caleb martin <laughs> who's like sprinting into the paint no but it, it, it's just that thing where it, like you, the whether or not they've been winning games recently doesn't matter they're like primed for the playoffs mm. like um and so like both these i think philly probably like you know, if Embiid had come back two games earlier, they wouldn't be in this situation. Mm-hmm. So I think they they are going to want to be out of here as soon as possible. Um, you know, just put this play off, it, this put this situation behind them. Whereas I think Miami would totally be comfortable to lose this game. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, like I think I think Miami like their chances against anyone, <clears throat> including the Boston Celtics. <laughs> That's rough. I know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I think you know. You know what? I take that back because you'd just much rather play the New York Knicks. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in any situation. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I, I can't really split a hair here. Like, I think both these teams are going to be like so hungry to win this game. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, because they both know they're making the playoffs. This is just like, when are you leaving the playoffs? <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah. I think. Uh. I think. I feel like the Heat are in more of a flow than. The 76s. Mm-hmm. Um, and although it, it doesn't take much of an adjustment to reintegrate Embiid, like everyone knows he's, he's the guy in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it won't be much of an adjustment to reintegrate him. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but even still, I think the Heat are just rolling too much right now. And then I think again, yeah, I think the foresight is winner of this game gets to play the Knicks. And I think both teams will be licking their lips against yeah. Uh, playing, coming up against the Knicks mm. I think the Heat know they have the one up on them um, like having beaten them last year uh, and I, I th- I'll i be rooting for the Heat and I think yeah. the Heat will win uh, yeah, okay. but I think this will be a great game it'll be an incredible game yeah like, like yeah. this could seriously be a conference final <laughs> yeah, like from yeah. the start of this season if you were to say Sixers Heat in the conference final yeah, like, that'd yeah, be awesome yeah, yeah. 100% yeah. 100% yeah yeah, both with so much to play for. And, like, Philly have been good. Like, I I really think 
So let's say what they won fifty four games last season. They won forty seven games this season. Mm. Seven seven win drop off is probably what happens when you lose Joel and B. Like, or <laughs> like he played. Th- wow, he played thirty nine games this yeah, year. Yeah, holy yeah. So shit. Like, that's just such an understandable drop off. Yeah, but they look. They also look better this season. I think they look more. They look like a team that's more ready to have playoff success than they did last season. Like yeah. you know. Um, Nick Nurse has kind of evolved Embiid into like like Embiid could be really good in the playoffs under Nick Nurse, you know. Mm. Like mindset aside, the the way he's playing under him could, could be like a lot more playoff friendly. Mm. Um, but yeah, now I have to make a prediction here, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> you can make it at any time. Uh, Embiid led the league in scoring the last two seasons before this with thirty point six and then thirty three point one. He then jumped up to thirty four point seven and hasn't isn't leading the league in scoring. <laughs> but is that because he's ineligible? It's because he's ineligible. Ah, yeah. oh, I think. I think. How much is Luca? I think Luca had thirty three. I want to say. And thirty. Fuck man, thirty three point nine. Wow, that's a lot, isn't it? But he has the bolded, bolded <laughs> points, points per game. <laughs> yeah, the Embiid. I remember the start of the season, especially, which is when he was playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, the his playmaking was incredible. Yeah. Like yeah. so, like so deadly, crazy yeah. how when he stopped shooting over doubles, he started <laughs> yeah. winning more easily. Um, I knew, of course, came first in MVP last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like averaging another assist and a half and another point and a half per game, like on a team that looks better and like more of a unit. Like it, it didn't feel like anyone on the Sixers was. Unlike it has felt in the past, like no one in the Sixers was sacrificing anything for Embiid to average that extra yeah. point, extra point a game, you know. Definitely. Like if anything, he was making everyone around him better. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna pick the Sixers here just to just to throw a little bit of competition in the mix because, okay. like, um, I do think. Mm, I mean, I they, they've got they've got the better roster. The Miami Heat are obviously just gonna do whatever the fuck they like in the playoffs. Mm. Um, but I do. I think. I think I like Philly to win this. And mm. yeah, it'll, it'll be, it'll be fun. I love, I love the, I love Jimmy Butler Philly games as well. Mm. Like mm. there's yeah. like, there's, there's just the right amount of love lost. Like, <laughs> he, <laughs> like he obviously doesn't hold anything against Embiid or the players mm. and it's just the organization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good way of wording it. Um, yeah, okay. So we disagree there. I'm going the Heat. Yeah. Uh, and then what about the 8-9 <laughs> matchup? The 8-9 matchup. Uh, so who did we have coming out of the 9-10? I, I said Atlanta. I think you I think I said, said Chicago. Yeah, yeah, because of Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we disagree on both of these. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we can agree that on... Uh, <laughs> well, we'll... we'll all right. All right. Well, I'll go through mine first. I've got the 76ers playing the, the Bulls. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take the 76ers yeah. in that one. Okay. Um, I just think they're too much better than them. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the Miami Heat playing the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. And I'm going to go with the Miami Heat because, yeah, I think they're the better team. <laughs> nice. That could come handy in the fourth. <laughs> uh, Do we want to briefly talk about a bit more about, yeah, like what those two alternate first round matchups might look like? The um, um, Celtics Heat or Celtics yeah. Sixes and New York thing, I think. I think yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what do you reckon, Celtics Sixes? Celtics Sixes. I think I think that'd be a sweep in favor of the yeah. Celtics. That's so sad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think that the they will just keep them at they will just keep them at a comfortable. Actually, no, they won't keep them at a comfortable distance. I think that there'll be patches where the Sixes would be ahead, mm. but I don't think it'd ever feel like the Sixes are in control of the game. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joel Embiid can be big But he can only be so big I was looking at his game log before It's actually comical How every 40 plus point game Is yeah, against yeah, a, yeah. a 25 or less win team And the Wolves Somehow yeah. stuck a 51 point game in there, <laughs> there was, Who's their center? <laughs> there was me <laughs> <laughs> on, on my uh, explore page on Instagram It was like a, a Philadelphia 76's official Instagram Like top 10 Embiid games of the season Yeah and I think their only good opponents Were like the Wolves. I think he had a good game against the Thunder, weirdly enough. But every other team, mm. lottery team. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, he, he did well against Chet. Huh? Yeah. He did well yeah. against a, a rookie that can't put on Welcome weight. Welcome to the league, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Celtics Sixers. What do you What do you think? Yeah, I, I think the same thing. Four-gamer. Like, uh, I think four-gamer. The 
Boston has a better player on every position in the court except yeah. center. And then at center, they've got Kristaps Porzingis, which is like not a bad matchup. No, it's great. Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> and then you could also, like, Al Horford will play, like, you know, relief some center. There and it will be fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, I just don't think they're worried about anything in that series. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Um, what about Boston Heat? Well, also, I think the thing oh. for Philly will be like, Oh, the key will be Tobias Harris, but how many times have we said that before? <laughs> and he has not found the key. 17, 7, and 2. He's there fiddling with his <laughs> shit. Uh, also, um, Chris Stapps, how is he health-wise? Uh, he was inactive the last two games of the season. Was that just rest? Yeah, it was just rest. Okay, cool. He's, cool. he's unfortunately incredibly healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... Fuck. The basketball side of it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then Celtics Heat. I think the Heat. Uh, I think they. Fuck man. I think the Heat could take them to. Now I hate saying six, so I'm going to say six on the precipice of seven. <laughs> I think they could. T- I think they would lose the series, but I think they would take them. I couldn't imagine it being a, fi- a GS. I think yeah. it'd be a six or a seven game series. I can't imagine it being a seven game series simply because. No, actually I can because that's happened so many times. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say simply because I think the Heat would win Game Seven, but mm. then they famously lost that Game Seven to them two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm going to say seven. I'm going to say seven just because there'll just be some absolute dumb fuckery. Yeah, um, and yeah, like I think Boston will win, but maybe they will. Ex- maybe they will expose whatever the flaw in this Boston Celtics team is. <laughs> <laughs> they might. They might find it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think they will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they'll come as close as you can. <laughs> and then Nick 76ers. Um, I really like this series. I mm. think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But I mean, you know, the, the, like no, 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 no team can really stop Embiid or Jokic or Giannis or any mm. of those players. But I don't know what the Knicks do about Embiid. Like, I feel like he would just, at least on the scoring side, he'd probably have a field day or i don't know do you think do you think the um the the easy heart and uh uh mitch rob duo Again, is, good is enough mitch robinson him? healthy yeah like he <laughs> might be there zeke hardy yeah oh yeah mitch robinson is healthy i think if you can throw um oh, he, mitch rob played I played seven game, seven minutes last game, but he did come off the bench. Mm. Who knows? Well, he had one rebound. Jericho Sims was probably in, in the rotation there as well. Genuinely. So. <laughs> um, if you have three seven-footers you can put out there. If you have 18 fouls like that, <laughs> yeah. I feel like it'll be good contrasting styles. I feel like uh, you'd have like the stubborn, um, st- like old-school stubborn coach in... Tom Thibodeau coming up against mm. new school stubborn coach in uh, Nick Nurse. <laughs> um, I think I think it would be it would be a fun game to watch. But yeah, I feel like they have enough bodies to throw at Embiid. Uh, no, uh, Jer- your, your boy Jericho Sims didn't get any minutes. Precious Achua got got. Uh, oh, damn, Precious as well. Yeah, wow. So they really fuck, man. You wouldn't be happy putting Jericho Sims on, but if he was the fourth center, yeah. you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, I think it'd be fun to be kind of contrasting styles, sort of. They could just put on the midgets, which they have been happy to yeah. do. Um, like, pick your four between OG, Josh Hart, and Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think they'd just run rings around them. But, yeah. but I think it'd be a competitive series. Yeah, same. I do, yeah, I think the Knicks... I think Knicks I'd think i go Knicks in six for that, actually. Knicks in six. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to give myself the pass because it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Brunson... Brunson's just so much better than Maxi. Like, if you mm. want to do that sort of head-to-head thing, mm, yeah. and then what? Like, o- OG could be doing anything on defense in the series. <laughs> yeah, like, he could be it, just roaming defender. Yeah, yeah, he could be playing absolutely any role because you don't really have to worry. You don't have to. You don't. You don't have to have your best defender on Tobias Harris or Kelly Oubre. No, nah. like, that's just not necessary. No, nah. Tobias Harris will take care of himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then last machination would be hate. Uh, Heat Knicks mm-hmm. at at New York, which would be that'd be a flight. You'd have to you'd have to assume that's a flight. Um, Not a boat. <laughs> uh, uh, I would I would go I would go Heat in seven. Really? Yeah. I think I think they I think they just have their number. Mm. I think it's I think it's less about like which team is better, and I think the the the, the Heat have kind of like like fucking stumped. 
step I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> stepped their foot in, in the in their business. <laughs> Let's like, go with that. This Knicks team feels like the most legitimate Knicks team yeah. of the Tom Thibodeau era. For sure. Julius Randall isn't gonna be playing, I wanna say. Okay. And that might be a fantastic thing. That's so true. That might be like a really, really good thing. Mm. Um like look like other matchups, it's like, all right, well, he is like a, you know, 26 and 10 guy. And he, you know, he, he has stopped taking those awful, awful shots. Mm. Um, but like against the Heat in particular, having him not on the floor might be like the absolute best thing for, yeah, for, for the sure. New York Knicks. Because they, can sort of, they can sort of throw out like a Heat-like lineup of all these just like scrappy guys who don't know how to shoot threes until it's the playoffs for New York. Like, you can imagine Josh Hart going like five and seven. And yeah. Like, DiVincenzo has been like so good from deep, like since he got traded as well. Mm. Um, he's had some 30 point games, of, like it's set seven or eight threes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. I feel like you want to say something. Uh, well, I think uh, Jimmy could also do like a six of eight from the yeah. sort of game. Yeah. But I feel like also if, if I was saying that the Warriors are finding it hard to come by points, then I think that same logic has to come. Yeah, it has to go, uh, sure. has to apply for the heat as well. And the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Knicks, the, no, the Knicks, I feel like you got uh, Brunson, DiVincenzo, mm, okay, even yeah. OG. Okay, I like, I like the credit you're giving there, yeah. But like OG can like, you're so happy if he gets the yeah. ball and catches and shoots. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, there yeah. are so many players where it's like, like Jaime Hakez, it's like, Ah, uh, you know, like, <laughs> if he catches and shoots, it's like, ah, one more pass, one pass, one yeah, more pass. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ty- Tyler Hero is like, you know, he might be like the third best offensive player in that series. Mm, so, true. So, the third best bucket getter at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now the Philadelphia 76ers, do you know what their starting lineup is right now? Uh, Start at the five. Uh, Joel Embiid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tobias Harris. Yeah. Uh ubre has got to be in there. Yeah. And Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. Now their third starter. Fifth. Oh, fifth or starter. S- yeah. Or <laughs> the other starter. Um, Daniel House? <laughs> no. No, I don't no. know if he's on the team. No, who is it? It's not also this guy I've just learned, Ricky Council the Four. Oh, uh, it's not Ricky It's Council not Ricky Council the Four. Council the I, four. Love, oh, I love Ricky, yeah. All right, here's a hint. Could be a revenge game for him in the 7-8. It, it, might, it might shock you. I forget. Oh, it's Kyle Lowry. Yeah. <laughs> I Fuck, forget he's Kyle on the Larry. team. Yeah, I forget yeah, he's yeah, on the yeah. team every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to go back to that Knicks 76ers line uh, matchup, mm. I could more than imagine um, OG being put on Lowry. Yeah. But like helping off him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like when was the last Let, time Lowry yeah. attempted six shots, yeah, exactly. let alone hit four? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, is D'Anthony Melton's out? Uh it says uh, back injury, so I would assume yes. Mm. And then KJ Martin also injured. I'd start him. <laughs> you start D'Anthony Melton? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Over, over Kyle Lowry's 37-year-old corpse, for sure. <laughs> True. <laughs> would you also maybe start like Nick Batum or... Um, oh, Buddy Heal. Against which... Oh, yeah, Buddy Heal's... What the hell? Yeah. Wait, these guys are stacked. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, why didn't I guess any of those guys before I guessed Daniel House Jr. Um, who, who is on the roster? Um, he is. Yeah. Damn. Um, uh, what matchup were we talking about here? Because we were talking, we're talking about, about the Knicks, Knicks, Knicks Heat the, and then Knicks Sixes. Yeah. Uh, would you start Batum against the Knicks? No, because I think. Mm, nah, I don't think so. I think because okay. the Knicks have been playing to their like small size as a strength so yeah. much in the latter half of the season true um but you do have i reckon you'd have to upsize that that lowry guy yeah yeah for sure or at but least like, make him a threat with a with a d'anthony melton or a buddy heel yeah i, yeah. I would go for <laughs> that's fair personally but yeah but tom's been awesome since he got there like it's, mm. it's crazy he's still playing yeah uh pj tucker not playing or is he back at nah he's back at, at the clippers Oh, fuck, I was going to say yeah. Milwaukee. No, no, no. He's back at the Clippers. Jesus, how do people keep track yeah. of this stuff? <laughs> I used to be so on top of this. <laughs> Anthony Leon Tucker. <laughs> ah, that's where the PJ comes from. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well... Oh, wow. PJ Tucker, congratulations. Didn't miss a free throw this year. Really? Trivia time. How many did you take? How many free throws do you reckon PJ Tucker took? I'm going... I'm searching this the worst way. Um, eight? Uh... <laughs> Three. Three? Three. Do you reckon that was uh, one shooting, one regular shooting foul and an and one? 
or one foul on a three point attempt or three and ones. What do you think? I want to. I'm going to say a foul on a three point attempt. It was uh, one and one and one regular. Oh, damn. Regular basket. I oh, know one one just free uh, or a technical free throw. Free throw. <laughs> <laughs> God, okay. Also trivia time. In his 31 games in which he won 13 and lost 18 mm-hmm. and drew zero, how many times did he score more than one basket? 18 total. Wait, no, th- 31 total games. How many times did he score more than one basket in yeah. 31 total games? Yeah. Three times. Four. Fuck. Yeah. Jesus. Still not good. All right. Uh my trivia time no but it's kind of going to give it away in the form of the question uh who's the more experienced player robert covington or tobias harris in terms of games played no in terms of like years in the league oh shit oh my god is it different by one year no okay it's two oh i feel like it's got to be roker or else you wouldn't be asking no Tobias Damn, Harris. That was my second guess. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, should we should we take a should we take a break? Should we take another break? <laughs> should we? Um, <laughs> holy fuck! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. In how many of PJ Tucker's thirty-one <laughs> games this year did he not score? Fifteen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Scored in twelve. Didn't wow. in. He didn't in 19. Wow. That's crazy. He Isn't... started half of those games he didn't score in. Legend. Absolute legend. Um, anyway, before we go, uh, WNBA draft was today. We had a great episode on it last week. Mm. Uh, oh, actually, I'll say of the 75 minutes, five, we were kind of in the middle. Of, like We were just like <laughs> trying to figure stuff yeah, out. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. the other 70 minutes were really good. Uh-huh. But WNBA draft was today. It was really good. Um, were you watching live? Were you ke- I, was, keeping... I was keeping up with the ESPN draft tracker. Yeah. Um, and yeah. your commentary in the chat as well. So, <laughs> yes. So that, that was enough for me. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Got to see the, I was watching the, I was working, I'm working from home right now. So I got to see the draft live. Uh, and Caitlin Clark, first overall pick. Really cool to see that moment. Cause like, who knows how many times that's going to be replayed mm. on like Caitlin Clark highlight packages. Yeah. Like, all throughout her career with the first pick and yada yada um and yeah it was just great man it was just great it was i feel like uh i feel like the post draft draft interviews are always really sweet mm-hmm. like whenever a player gets drafted WNBA or nba it's just nice it's nice to see that <clears throat> that dream get realized um but yeah i think there were just notably uh more great um post draft interviews like not like press conference like a minute after they get yeah. drafted camilla cardoso i think she stands out she was like just uh she's happy to be you know providing for her family and you know she's got this like greater thing to play for mm-hmm. um there was another one in the middle of the first round that i'm missing uh, that i'm ah no uh pilly for who just got drafted by minnesota yeah uh do you have her first name handy Alyssa. Alyssa Pilly, she had a great, a great, uh, she had a great um, post post draft uh, interview as well, uh, and then Nadia Nadia Poch uh, had such, she was so good, she was obviously very nervous, yeah, yeah, um, but she was also still herself and still like a bit awkward, but also funny, like she had laughs from the cr- from the crowd as well, but then when she broke down, it was very like it was very genuine, mm. uh, it was like yeah dream dream come true yeah and yeah she was being interviewed for probably all of 90 seconds and i just i feel like you saw the full like the full range of motion with like this uh with this like uh overlying kind of i would i don't want to call it ang- anxiety but it was like similar to like an anxious energy but it was more like i don't want to be doing this interview yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah i'd yeah. rather just be uh like celebrating. celebrating this yeah. moment yeah uh but yeah it was a great show as well like from start to finish mm. it was great uh, any notes on the on the draft from you? Um, the I mean, yeah, top two picks were as expected, but like good that it went as expected. Let's yeah. say it's like Caitlin Clark's a given, but yeah, like I think like now that I have watched some Cameron Brink, I'm like, all right, that's the second best player in this <laughs> draft class. Um, the Chicago Sky going for Camila Cardoso and Angel Reese, uh, two bigs who I've watched play a bit of college basketball. <laughs> like, that's yeah. interesting. Like I'm interested to see how that 
you know, how they fit together. Yeah, hopefully... Oh, that was the sky. Sorry, not yeah. the sparks. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like, obviously, like, that team is just going to be crazy defensively inside mm. in the future if that's, like, their four and five but also like you know is that a sustainable offensive four and five but yeah like two two players i really like so it's cool they got draft together and then yeah like poch and um isabel Borle is both going to the atlanta dream is like mm. a dream come true you might say <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like um i mean we were discussing off air but like poch maybe there's like a route for her to be a sort of contributor role player in this first season Borle's is like you know the equivalent of a draft and stash we would we would say wouldn't we like, yeah you yeah know, um like she's got a lot more development to do but like i i think her ceiling is very high and you know being in an environment like atlanta like this you know good young upcoming team you've got a, a national team teammate there and then you've got like jade melvin who plays in your domestic league also there like it just feels like like a good kind of like incubator for her you mm. know even if she doesn't get to play like it's like it's, it's the right building blocks for her to develop as a player even if she's not gonna you know be on the roster wait what did you say about jade melvin um just no, being not jade melvin fucking jordan Cadena. ah uh, yeah sorry yeah <laughs> different, different J place name who, <laughs> who plays in the WNBL. <laughs> <laughs> J place name uh yeah yeah and now yeah the the i just feel like it's such a perfect um Oh my god! Fucking, we didn't even talk about her article. Oh god! Great article. We should have led on. I that, haven't yeah. read it yet on the deep turn. Yeah, I've read it good. a looks million good. times in uh, in a Google Doc. Yeah. But um, yeah, go check it out. Uh, <laughs> we had, we were hot off the presses, man. Right off the yeah. mark. Published like what? Half an hour after Caitlin Clark was drafted by the Indiana Fever with the first overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. <laughs> yeah, and we got a quick turnaround. We were on it. We were on it as soon as she got drafted. Um, and, but yeah, I feel like yeah, there's a, there's a and we mentioned this in the article, but a perfect storm brewing for the WNBA. Um, great time to become a, a a fan of a team or just the league or a player. Um, but I think <clears throat> Australia more specifically, there's like six teams. And I reckon I can rattle them off right now. The Seattle Storm, as always. The Liberty and the Aces. Not for Australian reasons, just if you're a basketball fan. Now the Atlanta Dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Minnesota Lynx. Mm-hmm. That's five. Is there one more? Oh, the, the Indiana Fever. Yeah. Uh, all have either Australian representation or are one of the two super teams. And not only Australian representation in the form of like roster spots, but rotational pieces yeah. like i would assume poch does is yeah. part of the rotation yeah and depending on how the dream season goes i feel like it will go like they'll be in the playoff i think yeah. they'll be in the playoff picture at least um but if they do have like don't, don't forget sandy brondello also coaches the new york liberty oh no shit yeah. and obviously kayla from last season yeah, for yeah. the aces but unfortunately didn't get re-signed yeah sorry go back to your point uh yeah there's like there's an aussie on all of those teams um and or an Aussie connection, mm. uh, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect Ball Ace to play unless this, the Dreams season goes uh, belly up. Then I would really expect her to be part yeah, of like yeah. she would be getting minutes and shots because she does profile as a player that would be very useful because she's a really like she's a fucking fearless scorer yeah, like she yeah. does not care no. who's in front of her. No. Even her first minutes with the Opals at the OQT, she was just like calling her own number with like running up and down the court with like Taylor George and yeah, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not only a great time to be a, a fan of the WNBA, but it's, if you're an Aussie, especially like pick a team. Also, Steph Talbot is on the Sparks still. Yeah. Oh, so then that also means the Sparks <laughs> who just picked second, uh, Cameron Brink and Rikea Jackson. Yeah. Fuck. They picked well. Yeah. They yeah, picked yeah, really yeah, well. Yeah. 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 That was good. Hmm. Um, yeah, well said, Lucas. Yeah. Um, thanks for an excellent episode of the JVG Tribute yeah. Show. It was an excellent episode. Yeah. Do we crack? Do we get seventy five minutes again? We are on seventy five minutes. Actually, <laughs> we're on seventy three. Oh, I'll put a put put, a, put the ad in, but do it at like point two five speed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting we're getting it to seventy five. Don't, don't get, worry. It's like you got to get your eight hours, get you seventy five. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like you should say just there's just gonna be heaps of content from the deep two, obviously because it's the playoffs and it's mm. you know, 
like lots and lots of stuff is going to be happening but yeah just uh just make sure you're bloody subscribed everywhere and paying yeah. attention to the website and everything like that because there's no there's no better time to engage with the nba than the nba playoffs because mm. it's, it's the the best product and it's the only time you can like keep your you can uh stay on top of everything yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the result of every game right? <laughs> yeah yeah maybe not the orlando cleveland series but <laughs> <laughs> probably not actually <laughs> All right, I'll speak to you next time, ladies. Bye.